Riverside Sports Center was uh, built in the late 1970s and for a long time it was just the municipal ballpark with a set of aluminum bleachers behind home plate and nothing else. When the Riverside Red Wave came into existence in 1988, that changed. The uh, $1.5 million worth of renovations to bring minor league baseball to Riverside meant the addition of chair seats behind both dugouts and clubhouse buildings. The right field clubhouse building was the visitor's clubhouse, and now UCR uses it as a weight room with a concession building there. Down the left field line, that is now UCR's clubhouse, which was uh, renovated a few years back with the uh, uh, generosity of Troy Percival, former Angel and former UCR Highlander. That was originally the Red Wave clubhouse and then the Riverside Pilots clubhouse, and it also held the team offices. This has always been a pitcher's park, and there's a story behind that. Don Edwards was the original baseball coach and uh, athletic director for a while here at UCR, and he had a hand in designing this ballpark, and as he likes to point out, he was a former pitcher, so connect the dots. In your season, how many balls hit a screen? Quite a, a few. In, in, the, in the 90s and the early 2000s, when the bats were live, We'd hit, in batting practice, 15, 20 balls a day over the screen. I remember Marty Castillo, who got to the big leagues with the Tigers, um, hit one across the street one day and short hopped the apartments. Before the trees got big, there was a white apartment complex back there as a hitter. You just couldn't see anything. That's why the batter's eye is off center. It's, it's candid to right field because that's where the apartment complex uh -huh. is. Uh-huh, okay. The stands behind me are empty now. They were not quite as empty when minor league baseball was played here, but darn near. Uh, the Red Wave and then the Pilots were both here three years. Neither was allowed to sell beer because of uh, complaints from the neighbors. So without beer, attendance suffered. Uh, the Red Wave was sixth in the league in attendance in a 10-team league each of its three years here before relocating to Adelanto up near Victorville. Uh, the Pilots came here in 1993 and they were last in the league each year. Their final year in 1995 they drew 52,000 some for a 70 game home schedule. And that's why they are now in Lancaster. Both of those teams relocated to stadiums that were built specifically for them, specific minor league stadiums, whereas when the team originally relocated here in 1988. It was a municipal ballpark that was renovated. And you, as you can tell by now, it hasn't had much work since and probably could use another facelift. It's very modest by baseball standards. We had the, 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 the hand-operated scoreboard. Absolutely. The scoreboard out there is now a fully functional scoreboard, but the first year the Red Wave was here, they didn't have that. They had just a tiny board that had home team runs, visiting team runs, inning, ball strike out. No score by inning, no advertisements, or what have you. Uh, that had something to do with the beer ban, too. The, uh, the Red Wave wanted to, and in fact had reached agreement with Miller Brewing Company for a $110,000 scoreboard, and UCR, which was a co-owner of the property with the city of Riverside said no it's an on-campus facility we can't be advertising beer now as you can tell they do advertise beer just like they have a, a beer advertisement in the student recreation center for basketball games right because we played the college world series here in 81 um, and 82 I know, and I, maybe even 83. I think 80. I think 83. This is the home team dugout, and this is the uh, manager's perch, I guess you'd call it. It's not much of a perch. It's more of a manager's spot. Uh, this is where Doug Smith stands as UCR's head coach now. When the minor leagues were here, uh, there were some interesting personalities as, as managers of those teams. Uh, the first year when the Red Wave won the California League Championship, the manager was Tony Torchia, who had been in the Boston Red Sox organization forever 
He'd been a major league coach with the Red Sox the year before they went to the World Series. Then he got demoted to double-A manager and decided that it was time for him to leave the Red Sox. Came over to the Padres organization and the second, his second year as a Padre, he was here in Riverside. Uh, the next year, the manager was Steve Labradich, who happened to be a former UCR star, grew up here, played here in Riverside, and came back as a manager in the Padres farm system here in Riverside. And the third year that the Red Wave was here, the manager was a guy you may have heard of, a guy by the name of Bruce Bochy, who will probably be in the Baseball Hall of Fame as a Major League Manager. And he said that this year that he was here, 1990, was probably the worst year he'd had as a manager just because guys got hurt and the guys that were here didn't play very well. But he said he learned a lot about managing through that adversity, and those are lessons that he still uh, still applies today in the San Francisco Giants dugout. Bad, you couldn't see, and you know the, the story was Nolan Ryan was going to pitch that night. You know, in relief. <laughs> I don't know if I'm really that interested in facing Nolan Ryan in, you the, in the half dark. Had, you would have had 18 guys with the Nolan Ryan flu. <laughs> yeah, there have been a lot of bad hamstrings that night. Yeah. <laughs> Odds are that minor league baseball has seen its last days in Riverside. It won't come back here because the game has changed and. The tendency now is for multi-million dollar stadiums with luxury suites and whatnot, something that this place won't ever have. And the odds of one of those being built in Riverside are pretty steep. For the Press Enterprise and PE.com, I'm Jim Alexander from the Riverside Sports Center.